Hello folks. In today's video, we will learn about Python. Python is a high-level programming language and using it we can do a variety of tasks. Although it is mostly used in data science, we can also build websites and games. So we will at first take a quick look at the official website. So this is the official website of Python, python.org. You can also check it out and we can go to the documentation section and read the docs. But I will quickly show you how we can download Python and start using it. So I will go to the download section. Here this is the latest release 3.11.4 but I would recommend to download one older more stable release. So I have already downloaded Python so I will go back to my VS code and start writing some Python code. But you can download any of it and then keep on clicking next until it installed. So let me go back to my VS code and I have made one plan.txt file. So these are all of the things we will learn today. So we will start with one introduction and uh, writing the hello world program. Then we will look at some variables in Python then some operators. Then we have some Python data structures we will look at. We will then go to control structure, loops, and lastly functions. So first of all, let me just create one Python file over here. So in the Python folder, I will create one main.py file. py is the extension used for Python. So we will start by writing the hello world program. And in Python, we can do it only in one line, and that is print, and then either in single quotes or double quotes, hello world. And to execute this program, we can either click on the triangle at the top right or in the console, I can simply write Python and the name of the file. So hello world is printed over here. So we have successfully written our first line of Python. Now we will see how we can comment lines and we can comment by writing one hashtag at the beginning. Now if I execute again, I see nothing because this line is commented and it has nothing to execute. So let me just uncomment this. And now we will see how we can make multi-line comments in Python and we can do it either using three single quotes or double quotes and here i will write this is a multi-line comment and now if i execute i will only see hello world because this is a multi-line comment only now we will see an important concept and that is the concept of indentation and indentation is basically some space at the beginning like some other languages c sharp and java they work in curly braces python works in indentation so we will check that out soon. But now let's just comment all of these lines out and let's see how we can work with variables in Python. So what is variables? Variables are basically how we store memory in a programming language. So memories can be of various types and we can declare one number in this format in Python. It's very simple. We will create one name and then we will assign one number. Now apart from numbers, these are also called integers, which is whole numbers. We can also make decimals and these are called floats. So I will write 5.5 over here and here this is called a float and also we have strings so I will write one variable name called string1 and I will write this is a string which is basically a text. So this is called a string and then we also have boolean values and which is basically either true or false. So let me write true and this is called a bool. Now we can also simply print out these things so we can print out num and also decimal and everything else decimal then we have string and we have the bool and now when i run this thing we see 10 5.5 this is a string and true so basically these things are printed now apart from printing out these things we can also check the type of these things so instead of simply printing out we will what we will do is simply use one type so in before num we will write type and then at the end we will close it now when i execute these things and let's just comment out this above four lines i will get the type of everything so the first one has a class of int then float string and bool so these are the types we have discussed above so that is how we can work with variables in python very simple and now we will check at some operators so what are operators we will write operators and first of all we will see we will write something let's say a equals to 5 plus 3 and now if i simply print out a what will i get and let me run this program and let's comment out the above parts now if i pr print out this program i get 8 so it is basically adding the 5 plus 3 and assigning it to a so this plus thing we are using over here this is called operator now there are several operators so a let me write 5 plus 3 and then let's say b equals to 5 minus 3 then we can write c 
5 into 3 and then d 5 divided by 3 and then we have modulus let's say 5 then this sign 3 and modulus is basically the remainder and then we have f which is we can call it double star or power and then we have g and this is also division now we will see what this is so first of all let's simply print out all of these things so we have a then b then c then d a f and g and just remove these things and now when i run this everything what do we see the first one is 8 which is plus second one is 2 that is doing minus third one is doing 3 the third one is 15 which is uh, like multiplying 5 and 3 next one is 1.666 something like that and that is 5 divided by 3 and then 5 modulus of 3 that is the reminder is 2 and it is giving us 2 next one is even 125 and that is the 3 raised to the power of 5 so 5 into 5 into 5 that is 125 and what about the last one the last one is giving 1 why is that and that is because this thing is uh, turning it into a float and the result is 1.667 something like that and but the last one what it is doing it is removing all of this decimal part it is like doing one floor operation over here so it is actually the same as flooring the d so instead of 5 if i write 7 the answer will be 2 over here and let's also change it to 7 and now you will see the difference as you can see this one is 2.33 something and this one is only 2 so that is how it is working so these are like the basic operators in python and apart from this we also have some comparison operators so let me just comment out all of these things once again and now we will check out what are comparison operators so let me just write a once again and let me simply write 5 equals to equals to 3 so what does this thing mean so in programming languages the equals to is actually an assignment operator and what this equals to equals to means if it is checking if a is equals to equals to 5 or not so i will assign the value of a to 5 and let me assign the value 3 to b and now if i simply print out a and b i will have 5 and 3 however now let me do one c and here I will check if a is equals to equals to b if the value of a and b is same now if i do a print of c what do i get i get a false because a is not equals to equals to b i can make it 5 and now this will be true so i have true so now instead of doing all of these things like this in only in one line we can write if a is if 5 is equals to equals to 3 and this will be a false and apart from that we can also check greater than less than not equals to many things so to check not equals to it, we have to write exclamation and then three then we can check for greater than and that is this one this is a strictly greater than and then we have a strictly less than and that is like this and then we can also check greater than equal to so we have to write this angle and then greater than equal to this is if 5 is greater than equal to 3 that means if i write 5 equals to 5 this will be true However, uh, for this one, if I write 5 equals to 5, uh, 5 is greater than 5, this will be false. So let me just put it as it is. And then let's make it f and this one will be less than equal to 3. Yeah. So these are like uh, comparison operators and let me just simply print them out. Let me just uh, take the above things only from a to f. and let's uncomment these things now if i run this program what do we get we get false first one is false because 5 is not equals to 3 second one is true because these are not equals to what about the third one this one is true because 5 is greater than 3 fourth one this one is false because mm, yeah actually uh, the third one is true because 5 is greater than 3 and this one is false because 5 is less than 3 and this one is also true because 5 is greater than equal to 3 and this one is false now let's change all of the 3s to 5 and let's see what is the result for the last 4 once again okay let me just make it 5 also we see different sort of results first one is true because it is equals to second one is false because 5 is equals to false so this not equal to is actually coming as false okay 
this one is false because 5 is equals to 5 it's not greater than so strictly greater than will be false for these two 3 and 4 and for the last two this will be true because this is checking if it is greater than or equal to so that is how this uh, like comparison operators work so and lastly we will check some logical operators so let me once again write a equals to something like true and false and we will write b equals to true or false and lastly c equals to not true so here we are checking three things first one is and second one is or and third one is true not true third one is not true and false we already know these are bool values so we are checking and or and not so now if i simply print out these things what will be the my answer so a b and c let me just print them out and here let me just clear out these things and print once again so first one is false so true and false this will show false and second one is true true or false this one will show true so this is like how we used to write logic tests. and second one is not true so that is why this is false so for the first one it will it will check whether both of these are true and only then it will do one true and second one will check if only one of them is true and then it will do true so instead of true i can write here 5 equals to equals to 5 so this is the same thing as true and uh, instead of false i can write here 5 is equals to equals to 3 so this is the same thing as false so it is basically writing one bool value by comparing two values in separate ways and the same things over here also so that is how it is working so if both of these are true a will be true if one of these are true it will be false in the second case if both if one only one is true and then b will be true otherwise b will be false and for c if it is true it will be made not true so that is how the logical operators work and uh, also let's just one check another brief thing and here i will write something so to know this actually we have to learn lists which we will learn eventually but let me just write it like this so this thing we are writing in square brackets this is a list and uh, here let me write six not in and let's say the same list now what will be the answer so let me just print a and b once again and let me run this thing and as you expected first one five is inside this list so this is true and second one six not in this list so six is not present in this list so if i make it like this it will come false it is false but i am giving one not in front of him so this one is becoming true yeah so that is how it is working so now we will check out some data structures in python data structures and the first one we will check is list so the thing that we used in square brackets above that is actually list and we will check this thing right now so what is a list so we can simply write list one and in square brackets we can write something let me just write the above thing this is the list and then after list we have something called tuple and this one we write in circular brackets and let me just write the same thing one second. and then we have something called set and this one is something that we write in curly braces and let me just write the same thing so there are some differences between like lists tuples and sets so we will check that out so first of all let me just simply print out these things print list one tuple and set second one will be tuple and third one will be set and as you expect the same things will come and we can also check the type of these things so let me just do these things i will write type over here and then first bracket and then we can close it and let's see what is the answer so first one is list second one is tuple and third one is set so what are these things so there are some differences between list set and doubles so the first one is mutability so let's check it out so we have a list one and let's say i can print out let me just comment out these three lines these are not required and uh, let's simply remove these lines because we want to do some experiments over here so i have a list one 
and we also have we can also access the elements of the list by writing it like this so i will write print of list one and i want the element in the zeroth index that is one i can also change it to something else and uh, i will get three now instead of list one can i do the same for tuple one and let me just write and the answer is yes we can also do it for tuple one and for what about the set can i do it for set one the element of two so we are getting some kind of error and that is set object is not subscriptable so basically we cannot uh, access elements of a set in this format so that is the one difference okay second difference uh, that i actually mentioned before and that is mutability and that is the difference between lists and tuples so let's see how to check that out so let's do one thing let's uh, assign the value of list 0 to let's say 10 now if i simply it should be list 1 not list and now if i simply print out list 1 what do i get we get 10 2 3 4 5 so basically this one is changed to 10 now can i do the same thing for the tuple let's check it out tuple and now if i do the same thing we get some sort of error and that is because lists are mutable it can be changed but tuples are immutable it cannot be changed so we are getting this error and uh, for sets we cannot basically access the elements like this so this is out of the question so there are like few more few more differences in between this set tuples and sets another thing is uh, like whether they allow duplicates or not so basically lists and tuples allow duplicates i can write one comma one and then do here also same but sets i cannot so now let's just assign these things and let's print them out once again list one and for tuple and set tuple and set and if i do python as you can see for list and tuple we have the duplicates but for set it has basically removed one of the ones and it has removed the duplicate so when we are working with uh, these things lists tuples and sets we will encounter many more such differences but as of now you can consider these three to be three distinct data types in python like these are three distinct data structures so apart from tuples and uh, these things let's now see another thing and that is called a dictionary which is widely used so here i will write something called dict one and here let me simply write something let's write inside curly braces name and let me give the name gary oak then role and role is pokemon intern and let's also write pokemon and pokemon is ev and let's uh, also write edge and edge right now i guess gary is 25 years old so now i can simply print out dict one and i will also print the type of dict type of dict one so now when i run this thing what do i get so i get uh, my dictionary and i can also see the type is dictionary now in dictionaries i can also print something like this dict one dot keys now this keys is a method we will see what are methods next but as of now you can see that we can print it like this also and values let me just comment out these two lines and now when i run this program what do i get i get dict keys as name role pokemon and age and dict values as all of these values so this is what dictionary does it stores key value pairs and that is how we are getting this dictionary over here in keys and values so yeah that's all about the basic data structures in python now we will look at some control structures so i will simply comment out this part and control structures are basically if else statements so what are if else statements so let's say i have x equals to 5 and now and uh, i can write something like this print uh let's write x is small and then uh, let me print out the value of x so if i now run this program i see x is small uh, and 5 now let's say i want to print only if this x value of x is less than 10 so i can write something like this if x is less than 10 i have to remove the braces x is less than 10 
and then I have to use one indentation that we talked at the beginning. So indentation is one space. So after this space, this Python program will understand that this print is part of this if statement. So only if the value of x is less than 10, you print out this line. So now the value of x is 5. So this thing will be printed. So let me just save and run again. So as you can see, x is small, 5. Let me make it x equals to 5. Now let's change the value of x from 5 to 15. Now what will happen? As you can see, nothing happened. That is because this value is false. And so this is not getting printed. So what it is doing over here is if this one is true, then you print out this thing, otherwise don't print. So if, if I now see, as you can see, x is small, x equals to 15, because this is made to be true. So here we will check whether one condition is true or false, and then we can print it out. And after if, we can write else. So I can write else, print uh, x is big, and x equals to the value of x. So now what will happen? The second, uh, the second condition will print out. So it is not printing out this part, that is x small. It will only go to the else part and print it out based on this condition. Now this is the if else control structure. However, we can also make it if elif and then else. So what is that thing? Let's check it out. And elif is basically here I will add another condition. So let's say if x is less than 10, this is small. And uh, let's, uh, let's say x is less than 10, this is small. And let's say if x is less than 20, then we will print x is medium. And then we will print out the value of x. So now what will happen? I have x equals to 15. As you can see, x is medium, this is printed out. So if I make it 5, I have the first one, x is, five, x is small. Then if I make it 15, we have the second one. And if I make it 25 or anything more than that, I have the third one. Now there can be multiple elif statements also, but I'm just uh, demonstrating with three. Okay, let's make it four. Let's just uh, take those, these two lines and let's make it 30. X is more than medium and then we have big. So now if I print this out, X is more than medium. So this is how we are using control structures. And uh, now after this, we will check out loops. And okay, yeah, before going to loops, there is actually another way to write controls. So let's just do it like this. So here I have this ifs and everything. Let me just comment it out. So what we will do over here is something like this. We will write result equals to, and we already have x equals to 25. So I will write all of these conditions only in one line. So I will write big if x is greater than uh, what we have here greater than 30 and then else let's write more than medium if x is greater than 20 else I have medium uh, if x is greater than 10 and lastly I have else what we have small so now if I print out this result what will I get so let me just run this thing again so we have more than medium so let me make it 35 and we have big let's make it 15 and we will have medium we have medium and lastly we have small when I make it 5 so we have small so as you can see all of these lines can be written only in one line and this is a pythonic way of writing so this thing we did over here this is called ternary operators so this is also a handy way of writing controls so now we will check loops so let me just comment out these parts and basically in python there are like two kinds of loops and we will check the for loop first so first of all let me just write another list inside let me write 3 comma 5.5 and yes you can actually mix up multiple data types inside a list so let me write dr stone as a string and false as a bool value 
and yeah you can also write another list inside a list so inside this one i will write two comma let's say vinland saga and now when i print out this list what will i get i will get this whole list now let's say i want to print out individual elements of this list so i can do that by writing a loop so here i will write for item in list one print out the items so if i write this code and now if i execute as you can see each of the items are individually printed three 5.5 doctor stone falls and the other list so yeah this is how for loops work now we can also make it work with numbers so let's say i will write something like this for i in range and inside let me write 10 and now if i print i instead of i this can be something else also this can be num also like the first argument this can be anything you name and now if i run this thing let me just comment out these two lines as you can see we have starting from 0 to 9 and uh, this is how we can work with numbers using this range and if i write let's say 5 comma 10 what will i get let me just print once again now it will start from 5 and it will go up to 9 if i make it let's say 5 comma 20 it will go up to 20 and if i make it 5 comma 20 comma 2 let's say now if i just run this thing as you can see it will have an interval of 2 if i make it 3 it will have an interval of 3 so the first argument is where you start the second one is where you end and the third one is the interval so this is how for loops work and the next kind of loop we will check is called a while loop so the while loop is something like this let's say i have a number x equals to let's say 20 and let me simply write a while loop i will write while x is let's say greater than 10 you print out the value of x and now this is an infinite loop because if i run this thing uh, everything will crash because the value of x is always greater than 10 and it will keep on printing x now i don't want to take this risk you can definitely but i will simply write x equals to x plus 1 it should be minus 1 and now when i run this program what do i get i get the value from 20 to 11 and that is because in every iteration it is printing out the value of x but whenever the value of x is reaching 10 it is breaking out of this loop because the condition is no longer valid so in every iteration it will check this condition and based on that it will execute whatever is inside this loop and now we will write something like this if x equals to let's say 15 i will write break now when i run this program i see something very interesting and it is only printing up to 16 and that is because whenever the value of x is reaching 15 it is running this if statement and it is saying break out of this loop and so it is only printing up to 16 yeah so that is how while loops work and also i will tell you one shortcut over here instead of writing x minus 1 i can simply write minus equals to 1 and it will give the same results so if i run we have the same results so that is how while loops work and now we will look at the most important concept till now and that is the concept of functions so what are functions functions are a piece of reusable code so let's just write one function and see how it does so i will write one function and name it greet and the job of this function is to greet people or anything so i will simply print hello world so it is greeting the world and now I can, how can i call this function so i can execute or call or invoke this function in this way so now in line number 129 this function is being called so now if i run this program we can see hello world and this hello world is coming from inside this function and after hello world if i write something like hello gary and then hello ash and now if i run this program i get all three lines and that is coming from inside this function so this is how we can use functions in python so there are lots of inbuilt functions and also custom functions that we can make and now instead of printing something by default functions can do almost anything and you can also pass values inside functions so those are called arguments so let's say from in the greet function takes two arguments a and b and in place of gary and dash let me just pass these things so i want to print out a and i want to print out b and this a and b i have to pass inside this greet function so let's say i will pass brock and i will pass goku 
and now when i run this program what do i see i see hello world hello brock and hello goku so whenever i'm executing a function let me execute once again with two different values let me write gone and uh, thorfin and now when i execute i see different results based on the values that i pass so this is how functions will give you a lot of flexibility with three lines of code i am actually executing here six lines and many more lines and also we can change the values now instead of printing directly there is another way to print these things and that is by returning something so let's say i will return few things i will return one string and now i will write f and inside this string i will use curly braces so this will give me variables so i have a and b inside so let me simply write hello a and b and now this return value will actually give me some value so i have to store it in something so let me greeting let me just create a variable and give greeting and here i will store the value of this function with two arguments so let's say one second gone and uh, professor rock and now when i now i have to simply print the greeting because otherwise i do not have any value so if i comment out this line i will get nothing so let me just comment out and run this program i get nothing now when i print out this thing what i will get i will get hello gone and professor rock and that is because i am passing a and b inside this function and this function is returning me one value and that value is this string and i am then storing the string inside this greeting and then i am printing out this greeting so that is how functions work in brief so that is all about the basics of python so we have covered these seven topics but i must tell you that this is only the basics so there are lots of other things in python also but we will cover all of those in a separate video so yeah Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.